Warriors. <clears throat> Everyone doing okay? Hello, Brock. Shahab, how are you? Uh, interesting that, yeah, I took profit, Sean. So I bought it twice and pulled the buck out of it both times. Flat. I think it could go. Anyway, here's oil before I talk about it again. So I traded it here. And then I traded it here, 49.60, and just got out. Was thinking we could at least get 52 and a half here, 52.35. Hope that helps you. Hello, David Fox. Uh, yen is interesting here. Last week, I never would have dreamed. I'm still long. Stops under the low. I'll get to it. Last week, I never would have dreamed we'd be back here at the breakout, which was a false breakout. So it's taken all of this, especially the NASDAQ, blowing off to new highs and S&Ps threatening them for the end to get back to the breakout, breakdown. So taking a shot here, okay? Still long Euro. I need to close over 29 for a weekly reversal. We're probably looking at 78.6 back. It's got to dig in its heels here, or new lows. Anyway, I gave it plenty of tolerance with stops here. Hope that helps you, Raj. Okay, what else do I want to talk about here? Yields. All right. So, you know, when it comes to the end, comes to gold. Finally had a pullback in the bond market. But I don't think this is the top. You know, I think it really got overdone. You know, maybe we're going to pull back some more and I'm wrong and the end will blow to new highs. <clears throat> but when you think about it, as strong as equities have been, it's really not that much of a give back, do you think? Yeah, I think up around there. Although if it really gets going, I actually hear, here's for Euro, let me finish with bonds. I still think we're going to new all-time highs, you know, this breakout. Unless, you know, the other option is, you know, this was A and this is B or 2. But I, I don't know if this was enough. Uh, this looked like a 4, which implies I think 5 would be new highs. So the most bullish thing I could say about the euro is this. Uh, I mean, the the uh, cup and handle, I think, measures up to about, you know, 112-ish. But there's actually this line here. And then look at this weekly confluence. If it digs its heels in and doesn't make new lows and we turn here. Um, that line comes in with a moving average. Actually, it's a 200-week moving average. And the uh, speed line, I think we're underestimating uh, corona right now. I've seen charts on it. It's parabolic. We keep hearing about cures. Uh, uh, some guys in a chat room were talking about there's nine cases, um, nine cases in India. That's not the kind of country um, you want it to start spreading in. You know, I haven't been looking at Dr. Copper. So um, I don't even have it up here. I am paying attention to gold and gold's at that level where it's good or bad from here. Pretty ugly week. But here you have the support. Steve was talking about 1550. It's trying to hold it. It's all going to be dependent upon yields. You know, if yields keep rising, gold will break down and yen will break out. But if the yen, which on the 15 minute here, 
is about to start diverging. See this, see this, see this. And we roll over and start trading back under 9.30, 9.10. Uh, gold has a chance to rally again. Good morning, Monica, how are you? Pippin, I told you the best way for you to know what everyone's doing on the team is to join, go in the chat room and ask them. So if it's really valuable, because you keep asking the same question over and over again, spend 80 bucks, 90 bucks, become a member. And then instead of coming in here and every day um, asking about what positions, if we're still maintaining positions, um, you'll know. How about that? Good idea? Okay. So, you know, uh, you guys think that you're, you know, enriching us by becoming a member. We'd like your business, but we don't need it. You know who's being enriched? Uh, someone who wants to know what everyone else is doing because eventually what they'll come to understand it only matters what you're doing. Right, guys? Does it matter what I'm doing? You control your mouse. We don't click the mouse for people. We give you ideas. We have patterns in play. We have tons of research. We have Amanda in the chat room who caught this collapse in cable quite a few times, right? So you want to know what Blake's doing and you want to know what the team thinks of the S&Ps, Pippin? You just go to here. You know, you scroll through all these instruments in case you're curious about something else. And then you go to uh, the S&P. And basic technical. Uh, there you go. Okay, so this is what uh, was showing yesterday. So I'm just saying that you could spend hours on the website coming around. Hello, grateful. Which place would you recommend to learn from options? You know, that's really not um, our wheelhouse. Uh, I don't think we're going to have one till uh, the fall. So, okay. So, Sean, the question, uh, Coach? Uh, when is the uh, next special to join? Promotion. Um, the fall, right? Tell him to email me, and if he's really interested, I can get him the. Only on the annual, will you? Uh, I can adjust. I can get him the yeah. Semi. Uh, for semi and Daniel, I can get him okay. the. Uh, offer if price. you've been a subscriber before, will Steve Steve will work with you? Okay, so uh, Steve, I don't know. Blake's busy. I mean, everyone's got a household full of. Uh, oh, I'm here. With <laughs> viruses. I'm, I'm here. Children uh, and wives. Yeah. Uh, you got I'm a good here. immune. Uh, I bet you took about a hundred thousand milligrams of vitamin C in the last few days, Blake. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I know yeah, you. Yeah, I um, I take <laughs> vitamin C. Like All right, seriously, All right. I take I take like uh, six, seven hundred, uh, yeah. or seven. Is it thousand? Yeah, five hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, oh, six, they're five hundred milligram. Thousand. Yeah, okay. time release. No, just pop them. I All pop right. them. rose hips. I'm a vitamin C pill popper right now. Okay, you're like Linus Pauling. I think that was the <laughs> guy. So uh, uh, I know you're distracted, but uh, if you want to take the screen, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. babbled and I'm a little air, uh, agitated today with people. Oh, uh, well, you know oh, what? Is Blake so short? Uh, da, da, da. Ed, you know, everyone wants to know. They come in here for free and they want to know um, what we're doing all the time. Yeah, so I all actually. All join. I took my uh, I took my S and P off when we broke above thirty three ten because it got stopped out. It just you know it stopped. It was just it was a small position, but it's like I really wanted to add to it, and I just never added to it. So I'm just kind of now I'm just kind of waiting. Now 
um, th this uh, this rally that we see in risk, it's I mean, it's pretty powerful. And, um, you know, I don't I, I sit here and I look at the market. And I'm like, what is it doing up here? Because obviously the coronavirus is having a negative impact globally, but the markets, the equity markets don't care at the moment. And I yeah. and I don't understand that because um the it's much different than SARS. Did you see that chart I sent you from uh, Jim? That yeah, shows yeah. a parabolic curve of Corona compared to SARS as it was a gradual uptrend. Yeah, so I think it's you different. know it, it's it's really they don't care until they care. No, <laughs> and that's that, that's a good point. The market doesn't care until it's, until they care, and so you know the 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 stock market's probably more focused on Tesla right now than it is on the coronavirus. Uh, it maybe is silly as that might be. Uh, by the way, we do have ADP in a few minutes. So l let me, uh, let me cover. Well, if you just... drive a Tesla, you're immune to the virus. What's that? If you buy a Tesla, you're immune to the That's virus. That's correct. You well. drive in your own little air bubble. Yeah. that has no, yeah. uh, no, okay, um... bro. <laughs> I'm muting myself now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the Euro dollar also, I took my Euro off. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm done with it now, unless we break above 111 or we, we, uh, come back and test 109.80. It's like, Eh, you know, why, why, why even deal with it? I, I like, I was short dollar yen overnight. Then I moved my stops to break even. Um, and then I got stopped out for break even. And then it pops back up to these levels, sold some at, uh, 64 covered it when it dropped to 50 something. And then, you know, now it's just sitting here, but what I'm really more concerned with right now is the dollar yen as we as we approach this big trend line, which once again, you know, I, I thought this would be a big rejection. It was. Um, and we're about there again. 110 is going to be a big resistance for this pair. Another thing that I'm really watching today and then I'm going to uh, I'll take it. I'll take us over to um, I'll take us over to uh, the. Um, uh I'll keep us here at the dollar yen because of the ADP numbers that are coming out. But one of the other things I'm paying really close attention to is the U S dollar Mexican peso. So this has been a carry trade favorite, you know, as stocks have gone up, you know, you, you short pesos, it's held up pretty well, but with the stock market hitting new highs, the dollar max just slumped. And plus it's Wednesday. Like I warned you guys last Wednesday, you know, when we were down here last Wednesday, it's like, okay, everybody's going to rush in and try to get the carry for the, 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 the carry rollover that happens this afternoon. So the dollar Mexican peso slipped all the way down to uh, support. Now we are at 161% extension. You can see it right here, 161% extension of this move. We're at 127% extension of the last bounce just from last week. And that all comes in. I've been waiting for a move to 1860. Am I, am I willing to stick my neck out right at this moment? Not yet. I want to see if the dollar Mexican peso can get back above like 1865. And then I'm, and, and I'd also like to see stocks move uh, lower in order for that to happen. But uh, it's something that I'm watching really carefully today as we're trading at pretty key support. So we are just about a minute outside of uh, this ADP number. And um, and again, the dollar yen at 110, love to see it there. We might get there um, maybe if we get a strong number because the market's looking for 156,000. Let me, uh, I think it's 156,000. 156,000, previous was 202,000. So if we you know beat that handedly, perhaps uh, the US dollar Japanese yen might trade up towards this 110 level. It's been in squeeze city and we have to get, uh, we have to get below 109.50 in order for this to turn lower now. So at this point, you know, the dollar yen is just, it's grind. It's like an insatiable, insatiable bid. I'm thinking that a lot of people were probably short um, as I was, you know, but they're, but they're obviously big positions because they're, they're like I said, it's an insatiable bid right now. So uh, let me pull up the uh, data flash really quick. 
291. That's a huge number. Wow. Huge number. Wow. wow. That is big. That's a big number. See if there's any revisions. Double the expected. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge number. So big number out of ADP. Let's see if we get... Uh, good data risk no on because it's, yeah. oh 199,000 so it, uh, the revision came in at 199 it doesn't it doesn't show here yet but it's it's basically in line good Big data dumb. is risk positive because it's good data bad data is risk positive because the fed is going to be more accommodative go figure right so it doesn't matter good or bad <laughs> yeah. the market goes up it just doesn't matter at this stage in the game um wow Wow. So let's see if the dollar yen reaches for this uh, 109.80 level. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm thinking 110, but uh, maybe we get stalled out over here. Just big pieces of data. The, uh, the euro dollar is back under pressure. Um, let's see the dollar yen. Yeah, let's see if we reach for that. It's not quite doing it. And, and yeah, I mean, it's risk positive. You can see the dollar Mexican peso slump right back down towards lows uh, following that number. So, um, really strong. I mean, you know, maybe perhaps today is the uh, the day that we just blow past the highs in the S and P and and give us a you know a big um, blow off top. That would be nice, huh? If we saw that. But for right now, it's uh, it's good data. Uh, you know, what's not being affected is this dollar Canadian. This dollar Canadian is not moving at all. I mean, it's. It spiked up on the news, but I think the dollar, the dollar Canadian has been doing something a little bit different and unique. It's not really moving with risk. It's moving, I think, more with risk aversion as it as it goes up. But then it doesn't sell off, which is really interesting about the dollar Canadian. Remember the dollar Canadian. I, I just want you guys all to know this false breakdown over here on the daily and weekly charts. This should lead to a breakout higher and it hasn't broken down. And I think if we get a move above this resistance right here, you know, this um, uh, 3320, it's going to be very, very bullish for the, the dollar Canadian. Um, I, I'm not trading it, but I'm watching it very carefully because it is so dang strong so dang strong um and i've been wanting or waiting for this this uptrend line to give way and you could probably do it like this it's just it's just holding steady which um you know again very surprising very surprising to me um so anyway, just a few observations that I see uh, right at the moment. Um, uh, let's see the, let's go take a look real quick at gold. Gold should have come off and it did. I'm surprised gold isn't a lot weaker um, than it is right now, but gold has come off a little bit where this, is, this isn't the 38% retracement. I actually should probably note this okay so we're we're coming out of this channel we're at a 78 percent retracement right now but i can't be a buyer of gold with stocks as strong as they are so so there's that um yeah yeah so Anyway, let's take a look at the bond market. Um, Dale, Dale, are you here? Yeah, bro. I heard you mention a little bit about um, the bond market. And you were looking at the bond market is hitting all-time highs. You know, this is the chart right here that I think we all have to pay really close attention to for the bond market to hit all-time highs. Here's your weekly chart. And... Even the, even if we breach the you know thirty two twelve level in the bond market, it's really the thirty three level 
that's going to be a big resistance for the bond market. That's that's the one that I'm going to be watching because if this trend line breaks, then your all time highs I think are just around the corner. And yeah. I, I, haven't you been surprised that the and now I know the bond markets come off this week and yields have gone up, but aren't you surprised that with stocks as strong as they are, the bond market is not yeah a lot lower. Yeah, I actually thought that the uh, that breakout you show with that gap before we pulled back was going to be, and it was for a day risk off. Right so, here. Yeah, yeah, that that move there. Uh, every, everybody knows between stock investors and bond investors who is the smartest crowd, right? Well, they haven't been. I mean, in comparison. That's, I mean, that's if a you're great shorting, point, Dale. You know, I mean, so it, it, maybe they will end up being, but they haven't been. Because uh, except they, I have seen a chart where after that big down, few down days, the bonds are actually outperforming the S and P's. But after this week, I don't think so anymore. So I, I know I believe that I've always bought into that maxim too, Steve. But um, you know, or, or let's say Dr. Copper, all bull markets are roofed in copper. Well, we've been building a roof in copper for a few years, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, it, it seems like the S&Ps uh, keep breaking through that roof and they've built a, a skyscraper. Right. Instead of the roof. So I, 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 these old maxims, uh, I think it was Michelle Snyder. She said, Dale, you know, we have to throw out everything <laughs> we learned well, we, over we, the last three decades. We or, have to because this is, a, yeah. this is an unprecedented new normal. Market, yeah. Right? New normal. It, it is the new normal, and it's the new normal is far from it. Home. It is new. Uh, <laughs> I can argue against how normal it is. <laughs> yeah, the new abnormal, Steve. <laughs> yeah, it's a new abnormal, more likely, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's 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 definitely an interesting market where we're at, and I and I'm I'm, I'm I, I sit here and I look at I look at what the market's been doing, you know, in the last several years, and you know, there's a there's an old adage. That Don't you fight, fight the Fed. Fed. And we were talking about yeah. it with Chi today in the chat room. It's like, are these wide? Look at the stock market. And my, you know, I had between my averages and the SP, I was short basically at 3,300. And when I got stopped out uh, at 3,310 overnight, I'm like, uh, 10 points on them, you know, it was, it was still a small position, but it was like, all right, I had added up here when we were up there. And, you know, I took my loss and I'm like, I, I sit here and look at the market and go, man, you, you know, the, the market's really unstoppable while you have every central bank, including China, just providing massive amounts of liquidity. There's not a lot that's going to stop the market if the liquidity keeps flowing. And that's continuously what we see. Um, and and or or I guess you'd have to say unless the coronavirus completely picks up steam and you know then at that point in time you probably have to be a little bit more concerned. Yeah, about, liquidity can't really solve many yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah, right? liquidity can't <laughs> solve that. Right. So um, you know, but for right now, it's like I you know I look at the the I thought this thirty three thirty three thirty three level was going to be it, but. You know, maybe we reach again for, you know, 3,400, which would be the 161% extension of this last move down. You know, th these breaks and trend lines that you see here, doesn't matter. We broke and we came right back into it. So, you know, w why stand in front of the freight train at the moment? Um, but even even when we do get reversal signals, they they last for very a very, very short period of time. The only bearish thing I could say, and I've lost money trading it, maybe this time it'll be different because I don't feel like doing it, is if you look at the RSI, I mean, this is pretty glaring. I mean, you know, the other divergences were close to 80 above, you know, and you had to put your cursor on it to see if it was a lower reading. But here you don't even need your cursor to see this type of glaring divergence. And NASDAQ has already made a new high and look at the RSI there, I mean. You know, it's going to take another 300 points in the NASDAQ for it to blow it out. So yeah. this is somewhat different. I, I haven't seen a glaring divergence like this. And, and VIX is diverging even more now. Yeah. 
Yeah, is it holding the triangle breakout still, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Will it's it still today? Is will it yeah, today? Um, we'll, we'll find out, I guess. Yeah, but so okay. far, it is. Well, Steve, yeah. I'm going to pass it over to you guys so you can show you can show them over um, the the glaring divergence that you're you're talking about. I hope um, your family feels better, Blake. Thank you. I'm yeah dealing with a lot of uh, sick uh, people over here, but that's all right. More vitamin C. Okay, okay, <laughs> Linus. You guys Whatever have a good one. Uh, thanks, thanks good everybody for, uh, for for tuning in, and uh, I'll turn it over to you guys. Okay. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, Blake. You thanks, too, morning, Stel. Stella. I, I hope hey. that your family starts feeling better. We are almost 100%, so yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I have a bit of a cold, but that's nothing. Um, yeah. That's what I said last Thursday and next day. The little guy had a fever, and two days later, the wife started getting sick as well. So, <laughs> well, I yeah, stopped yeah. drinking Corona, and now I'm drinking Pacifico, <laughs> uh, so I don't get, <laughs> so I don't catch it. Anyway. Have, you, have you seen this guy's frustration in on Twitter? Right. <laughs> the no. Corona Twitter account. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, that's the a Corona fake. beer. That's uh, a fake. That's a fake. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, okay, I have a couple but of things it, to say. But it's a good free yeah. advertisement, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Um, first of all, Blake said, you know, how come bonds are not uh, lower, so higher yields while stocks are going to the moon? Well, you know, for, for, for yields in bonds to go higher, uh, you either need to see inflation or you need to think that central banks are going to be hiking. I think none of these are going to happen. So at least not reported inflation and certain central banks are definitely not hiking. So it kind of makes sense that bonds are where they are here. What doesn't make sense is equities, but you know, we've talked about this a million times. Uh, you know, we don't have to go over it again. Um, the other thing which was interesting about the number of ADP today, huge number. Um, however, if you look at say, it's a very volatile number. If you look at say a six month rolling basis, it's exactly on average of the past three or four years uh, because we've had some- And crazy. sometimes we also have like big revisions. So you, yes, know, you yes, might yes. get a small number today and get it revised higher next month. Yes. You might get a big number today, get it revised yeah, yeah, lower. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, huge example was last year, as we've said, NFPs in total over a year were... Um, um, 600,000, uh, or was it? What was it? Four, 500,000 less. 000. Yeah, yeah, revised down over a year. I mean, you know. Yeah. I so, mean, don't get, don't get me wrong. It's a big number, but uh, just... It is, it is. It definitely picture, is. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the rolling six-month average is, is exactly in line. So it's uh, uh, something to think about. Um what else? So we had some other numbers today. Um, PMIs uh, out of uh, Europe and UK. The UK, it's funny, we had manufacturing PMI yesterday, was it? And it came in at 50. It was expected much lower and, and everybody was saying, oh, but you know, services is much more important for the UK. Correctly so. Services PMI came in at 53.9, up from 50 last reading. So that's uh, also going up. Composite PMI up to 53.3. So, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a recovery, but uh, it's not uh, collapsing. So that's, uh, that's good news for the UK. Uh, kind of similar story for Euro, the Eurozone. So, you know, the, the beats were only marginal, but still uh, services PMI beat um, by 0.3 at 52.5. France was negative, uh, was worse than expected. Italy was better, Germany in line. So overall, PMIs were... Um, we're uh, you know constructive today, which is uh, good for change. And uh, I don't know if you saw Steve um, about the coronavirus. There was this site, Taiwan News or something. I posted it on the chat room. It's been going around on Twitter. Apparently, a um, uh, website, uh, this Chinese company Tencent. They're, they're pretty pretty big. They have a, a page where they report um, the cases and deaths and everything. And for a, for a little while, they showed the page which was showing. 500,000 uh, infections and 25,000 deaths. And, then they, think, and yeah. they, pull, they pulled it. I'm, I want to believe it was an error, you know, just somebody, there was a typo. But, you know, imagine if they're hiding stuff. I'm not saying they are, but I'm just saying that imagine. It definitely it. was an error. The question is, if it was an error that he put it on or if the numbers were wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But, um, so it's what type of an error is the, is the question. Yeah. The headlines we had today from China, from the UK, apparently there, there are a couple of medical teams who are reportedly close to finding some kind of vaccine or some kind of solution against the virus. It remains to be seen, but uh, this is what... 
uh, gave the market wings again today. And not are... that it needed it, because we had already seen no. like a huge no news recovery. Uh, trade balance, by the way, ah, you know, it's marginally worse. It, yeah, whatever. yeah, it's marginally worse. But nobody's paying attention nowadays to, to the U.S. trade balance. I mean, everybody has given up on. Uh, and there we go, Canadian trade balance as well, marginally better yeah. on the other hand. Uh, you, you know, a few decades ago, trade balance was like a big, mm. big number expected from the markets, exactly as we do now with NFPs or whatever. But nowadays, everybody has given up on, you know, the possibility of the US not running huge uh, trade deficits, so nobody really pays attention to it. Yes, that is true. So, you know, big like mistake saying, if you ask me, and I do believe that at some point in the future people are going to be paying attention to that once again once they realize that, you know, things like uh, trade deficits, budget deficits, you know, they didn't matter for centuries for no good reason. They stopped mattering for a bad reason. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, they, yeah, these are the pillars of the of an economy. You know, you have <laughs> exactly. To, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's economics one on one. You know, you can't ignore them or say, "Oh, I'm going to have big deficits. It doesn't matter. It's going to be stimulative. We just print more money and just, uh, you know, spend." Yeah, more. and you know, everybody keeps focusing on like, you know, what is the consumer doing? And you know, they don't realize that in order for you to import stuff, there are only two things you can pay for them. One is by exporting other stuff that other economies need. Two is by increasing your debt. So one of the two, which is the latter, obviously, is unsustainable in the long run, but nobody seems to care about it. Yeah, that's very true, my friend. Very sad and true. Um, what else do we have? We have ISM today. Obviously, payrolls is the main thing this week. Mm -hmm, on and, Friday, uh, yes. And obviously, um, uh, you know, the market should should take today's ADPs as, you know, a good uh, omen uh, for uh, Friday's data. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that's it really from me. Not, uh, nothing uh, earth shattering happened uh, overnight, so um, we can carry on with the charts. Yep. Okay, so um, we have quite a few people participating today in the chat and uh, quite a few questions. I'm going to start from one of the later ones because I wanted to mention that anyhow. Uh, Gautam says, Steve, pretty clear to me, DXY uh, heading to 100, Euro USD trading to new lows and USD CAD heading to 135. What do you think? What I think is the following, that it is a likely scenario. Um, I said the other week that, you know, the fact that you know, DXY was breaking again above 97.70. And the fact that the move lower was, you know, clearly corrective in nature, um, you know, prevents me from being bearish uh, yet the dollar because my long-term thesis, of course, doesn't change. Um, I'm also monitoring this descending channel. You can see it here in red, which we're testing resistance once again here. So I do think that we might get a slow grind higher once again. Now, I don't believe that we're going to get an impulsive move higher, but don't forget that we, you know, we've had a slow grind higher since uh, 2018, and there is absolutely no reason why this the same abysmal uh, type of price action can't continue. Uh, so DXY can definitely move uh, to new highs slowly. EURUSD can definitely move lower slowly, but I have to say that I would be looking for other things to trade because one way or another, both of them have been abysmal. I mean, uh, I haven't participated in trading EURUSD. In, I don't e even remember how long. And I feel so good about not having attempted to do so. Um, I think there are much, much better opportunities out there than trying to, um, you know, assume what's going to happen in something that is trading in, you know, such a choppy, slow, uh, annoying, overlapping manner that like the EURUSD has done. So, yes, it can definitely move lower from here. Do I expect that, you know, we're going to see something impressive? I mean, like, uh, you know, a collapse in the Euro USD, like moving to parity within like a few weeks. No way. I think it's almost, almost impossible. Nothing is impossible in the markets, but I think it's almost impossible. So I, I, I expect this frustrating type of trading to continue. And yes, it can definitely be with, 
euro usd moving lower because you know we had a failure in in pushing higher after that attempt and that keeps the pair in a slow downtrend which means that the path of least resistance remains the downside but as i said do i want to participate in this type of market no personally i don't so i agree with you now having to do with usd cad because i do think that usd cad is more promising having to do with you know the potential of actually trading it and uh you know having like more clean price action and something you can actually you know trade much more comfortably um yeah i do think that the potential for usd cad to actually um move higher from here is decent uh, i do think that this move lower um uh is going to be um quite a nice basis for uh, exploding higher once and if we do break above this formation right so um we might see some type of a pullback but definitely like a you know a move above like 133.20 um and i think it's game on so yes i do think that in that case use the cad can move substantially higher so you know between euro usd and use the cad in my opinion it's a no-brainer I'd, I'd i'd rather wait to to trade use the cad than uh the euro usd so i'm on board with you for more usd cad uh, strength as long as we break above 133.20 now until that happens from a risk reward perspective being so close to resistance you know i can totally understand somebody that wants to fade strength here anyhow you you can risk you know very little i mean if you short here you can risk like 60 pips uh to initially um expect like a move down to let's say 13180 and why not even lower i mean nobody says that we can't keep trading within the boundaries of this triangle uh, for quite some more time which means why not even a move down to 130 again right i don't think that's the more the most likely scenario but i'm saying that from a risk reward perspective you can start by having like lower expectations for you know a simple pullback since you can risk very little and you might end up finding yourself in the right side of the market for you know a lot more than like 80 pips or you know whatever it is actually it's close to 100 pips now like 995 pips or whatever until uh reaching 13180 if we actually move lower so but yes above 13320 i wouldn't try to take the other side of the market um i wouldn't blame anybody that wants to play that breakout and in that case i think that 135 that you mentioned is probably um um quite a conservative target uh, i think that next upside resistance is probably going to be closer to 135.50 uh, but i see no reason why we can't uh, test these highs that we had at the end of 2018 at 136.60 even higher than that okay so um yeah i think trading this breakout makes sense 100 percent um Joe is saying, Sean, if you can check your check your email, he mailed something to you. Um, Stelios Palladium nearly sortable. Uh, let's have a look at Palladium. I don't have a position anymore. My last part was stopped out for 2.6% profit. I was hoping for you know much much bigger move, but you know I can't complain. I mean I mean I made more than 5% in in the first half and another 2.6 in the other half. So you know a decent trade, but. I was really hoping for something more than that. Palladium, once again near the highs, but look at this, look at this RSI divergence. I mean, it's almost in an impossible scenario for, for Palladium to make a new high without seriously diverging in the RSI. Don't forget that the daily RSI actually made it to something like 93 i think that you know this is something you you might go through a whole lifetime to see on a ticker like a daily rsi at 93. so uh i would be looking for another opportunity to be short here there's no question about it in my mind um uh, and i do think rsi divergence is going to be huge in that case now how would i go about it in this case you know you just you know fib extend this correction um 
and you know take it from there so you know we have like 2604 is the 127 percent extension almost 2700 is the 161.8 percent extension um you know any failure from those levels given as i said before that rsi divergence is going to be given um is going to get me interested once again so uh, what i'm going to be looking for to be short once again is going to be like a big reversal day um at a fib extension and as i said rsi is going to be diverging for sure so uh, that's going to be my hint for another attempt to be short um and you know i'm, I'm going to be more than happy to take it i think that palladium is is overblown uh you know hugely overblown and uh i don't consider the latest pullback that we have a worthy correction of this parabolic move that we've seen because in the grand scheme of things if you, if you zoom out you know this type of a correction we had doesn't even you know register on the chart so trust me market like this needs a much much bigger correction for for it to actually you know reset expectations positioning and everything else now Copper, since we went back to the metals, copper is also, you know, we, we indicated this as an important support level at the end of last week. Uh, copper did find support here at the same time and not, you know, coincidentally, we know that, you know, they tend uh, in, in, in the past, they were actually even more closely correlated, but they still have some, share some correlation. At the same time that Aussie USD was also rebounding from lows, right? So both of those pairs are rebounding higher. Um, you know, that these, these type of corrective moves can actually unfold even further. I mean, copper has already uh, sliced through the first area of resistance I was looking for, and it can move higher from here. I mean, 262 is the next um, upside resistance. So, you know, um, it's a correction that can run all the way up to 270 probably 271 so i wouldn't try to fade it immediately i mean i would like to fade it if it got rejected immediately from 256 but you know it can run more than that um as it seems uh gold yes gold had quite a negative day yesterday uh and it's currently retesting this horizontal support resistance area support so quite an important zone here let's see what happens if we lose this support, uh, that's probably going to be a bearish event and that can lead to, you know, a bigger uh, correction lower. But as long as this zone is holding, I wouldn't be yet trying to uh, fade gold strength. So it is what it is. And the same deal applies with silver. In this case, uh, by looking at this uh, type of formation like a pennant, um, we're still trading above it. So, you know, nothing really um you know bear is happening from a technical perspective yet in in the case of silver so you know but don't don't jump the gun for those metals uh because you know a lot of people have tried to sort like the you know every single attempt of a correction that we've had during the past couple of months and a lot of them were taking to the woodshed you know same deal as those that were trying prematurely to uh, short Tesla. Speaking of Tesla, and that's why I'm, me I'm mentioning it. Tesla had quite an interesting uh, day yesterday. I mean, like a huge spinning top yesterday, uh, with the highs being at 970, the lows being at 837. But keep in mind that you know all that happened by gapping higher from 780. So in essence, Tesla uh, yesterday had a 200 dollar move higher at some point in the day so at some point in the day uh you know irrespective of the parabolic move that had already started uh you know being apparent on the chart had another 200 dollars of upside um, until it actually found a high near uh, 970 and then settled lower at uh, 80, uh, 887. Um, be careful because this type of a candlestick uh, you know in combination with another one can lead to uh, you know a big reversal lower so uh, you know i think that this market might be in the brink of actually blowing up here daily rsi at 93 as i was explaining before with palladium readings like you know daily rsi is above 90 and you know especially closer to 95 are things that it might take you a lifetime to see 
on a ticket and some tickets you might never see them like even in the duration of a lifetime so i have no idea who would actually be trying to you know buy tesla up here it's beyond you know mania at the moment now does this mean that it can't move higher from here of course it can i mean we all remember how bitcoin uh traded you know in the first parabolic phase that it went up to 20,000 right i mean it was looking like an unsustainable bubble even at let's say 12,000 then it made it to 20,000 but does this change the fact that after going to 20,000 everybody that was correctly pinpointing that this type of price action is 100% a bubble and it's going to blow up were right no they were because it actually went back from 20,000 to 3,000 now if you apply the same logic to tesla even if we assume that it can go another 50 percent high and make it to 1500 if it actually pairs back as as many gains as um bitcoin did you can actually see it back towards two three hundred easily so you know do what you wish with it but you know that's what i expect from tesla and that's my advice don't be on the long side where we currently are i mean if you were on the long side kudos uh doesn't matter if it was you know short squeeze lack or whatever because in this market in in any market actually what matters in the end is you know if you can make money if your pnl is positive and consistently so if that was part of you making a profit good for you but you know, this is now in the phase that you shouldn't participate. And if you want to participate, just find, you know, the safer way to be on the other side of the market. For example, buying some puts is, you know, uh, probably the safest way to approach that because you have at least, you know, specific and limited downside and not unlimited uh, downside. Uh, Tesla island reversal depends on today's uh, candlestick. But yes, an island reversal, Gautam, is a possibility if we actually gap lower uh, and we leave that huge spinning top on its own uh, above today's candle. That's going to be like a huge, a monstrous uh, island reversal in that case. Okay. Same can apply if we have like a couple of days um, consolidating near these levels and then we gap lower. It can, it can still be an island reversal. It doesn't have to be a single candlestick uh, that we leave higher. Uh, gold, silver, platinum. We already covered that. Let me see which questions I've left unanswered. Euro USD, we did. Fed liquidity, the driving force in the US. Not only central bank liquidity in general, because don't forget, for example, during the past few days, the Chinese central bank, the PBOC, has you know also like done huge uh you know injections of uh, liquidity um hello great uh, find the site and the room thank you for for your kind words which place would you recommend to learn from options especially tesla put now options is quite a complicated instrument to to read you can you can get like yourself uh even free education on options i mean if you if you google it you can find videos on uh on youtube or whatever that explain the mathematics behind options so i don't know if this is your kind of thing you know i have no idea um but definitely options is quite a complicated financial instrument so i would definitely su suggest for you to get some uh understanding before you can go into it okay um especially underwriting options uh so being short um you know uh, uh calls or puts um now um Having to do with USD Swiss, we had a question about USD Swiss, and you know, uh, this is what I'm paying attention to in USD Swiss. We have, we clearly have a range here in USD Swiss. Let me draw it out. There it is. There is resistance, and here is support. So uh, I do believe that whichever direction we break from this range, we should see an extension equal to this rectangle's height. So, you know, if it is to the upside, look for a move towards the 200 daily moving average. If it is to the downside, look for a move towards 95 cents. Okay. Uh, now, in between those levels, you can still just play the range, right? But, you know, personally, I would just, 
you know, wait for a breakout. So he, he, uh, either a breakout from 9750, uh, I would treat that as a buying opportunity, or below 9620, that one as a selling opportunity. And that's probably going to show us, you know, the direction for at least a few days. Now, um, copper, any potential downside target on the weekly copper head, head and shoulders pattern? Let's first wait for the correction to be over uh, before we, we get some more downside targets. XPD is shooting up again. Uh, yeah, it is. It's at the highs. We already showed that. Uh, pound USD, pound Aussie, Aussie USD. Uh, Raz, when something is in a range, that's what you need to do. So yeah, there are occasions that you can say that this is moving lower, and there are occasions that you say this is going to move higher above that or lower below that. Uh, because don't forget that having a neutral bias on something until something happens is also absolutely valid. Unfortunately, you know, I wish everybody was trend, everything was trending at all times. That would be you know, an ideal market uh, because, you know, everybody could follow like trend following techniques and, you know, make a shit loads of money. But, you know, it is what it is. And lately we've had several, especially from the um, uh, mainstream, let's call them FX pairs that, you know, they've been without trend. So, you know, you have to take smaller opportunities and play breakouts of ranges like this one. Uh, should also be, uh, yeah, but you're bullish DXY, so use this switch should also be bullish. Is that right? If you're asking me which direction use this switch has a bigger chance of breaking out at the moment, yeah, I would say higher, right? From 97.50, if that's what you're asking. Um, any news on sterling? Cable gapping lower. Yes, I actually did notice that when I was talking about something else. The pound has been moving lower during the past few minutes, but don't forget what I said before. Uh, now, there are two scenarios here, okay? Scenario number one, um, that this is a larger triangle and we're going to eventually break higher. Scenario number two, that the triangle you're, we're looking for is this one, this one, in which case that is the price action you should expect, okay? One move lower, A, B triangle, C lower, higher afterwards. So you pick your poison here. Uh, and, you know, who is going to determine what, what the case is? The answer is what happens from 129.20. I've said that since, you know, a couple of weeks before. The bull bear line here is 129.20. I am uh, thinking that the cable should produce another high. Um, later on, um, but uh, that doesn't mean that it can happen from lower, let's say from 127, uh, where we currently have like 127, 127.50, where we have support. So below 129.20, we should see at least another couple of hundred of pips to the downside before higher. Uh, as long as we stay above 129.20, there is still the possibility, what I deleted before, that the cable can move higher directly. Okay, so I expect one of the two to happen and 129.20 is gonna tell us which of the two uh, it is going to be. Now, the question about pound uh let me switch to it. Okay, here's pound Aussie. Now, that's what I expected when we were down there and more or less that's what happened. I was monitoring this ascending channel, you can see it here. We didn't actually test resistance. We came very, very, very close to resistance. Obviously, when you make it to the 127% extension of the, the last move lower and you're so close to resistance, you know, you're not buying up there, right? I'm hoping. So I, I really want to believe that, you know, not many people were, uh, uh, you know, naive to, to be caught on the wrong side of the market but at the highs. So the question is, what happens from here? The answer is, um, you know, we're now approaching support. We are at support actually. So this is one area that might act as support. If we move lower from here, I would then be looking for this channel support to, you know, work to at least produce some kind of an initial reaction. So that's what I think about the pound Aussie. And, you know, let me throw the pound Kiwi in the mix. Pound Kiwi, 
retested once again that resistance area, broke down from it, now retesting broke, the broken channels, trend line resistance are support. But keep the big picture in mind here as well. The big picture is we've been within this ascending channel since summer of 2016, right? So that's already a three and a half year old ascending channel. And you see that the market has respected it multiple times. So, um, you know, the big picture here is that you don't have a clear direction because it is an ascending channel. Yes, it is. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you want to look at the big picture, you also have to take into account that we had a very strong move lower and the move higher, despite having taken um, three and a half years, it has retraced. Let's see how much. let's say roughly 40% of the move lower that we had. So bottom line, and you know, that is usually a very good indicator about where the bigger trend is. Uh, bottom line, it took actually, let's even measure the price. So it took 412 days, that is a little bit more than a year, uh, for the pair to lose 34%. And it has now taken three and a half years, which is like triple that, for the pair to gain 22%. Right? So, um, I do feel that in the long run, this is going to end up breaking lower. Um, but of course, when we've been in this channel for three and a half years, you know, nobody says that that can happen in a year from now. So, you know, this is not an indication for me to trade it like today or tomorrow, obviously. But, you know, I'm just, you know, giving you the big pictures here. So the big picture is that, you know, we're trading in a very choppy environment for three and a half years. We're currently in the middle of this channel. I expect that in the long term, this is going to be resolved to the downside. Until that happens, you can just keep buying support and selling resistance, but, you know, there are better things you can do out there. Steve, if we get weak ISM number, can DXY get a hit? Yeah, it can. The question is, for how long is that going to last? And the, another question is, how big of a hit? Because let me remind you, we recently got a correction out of the DXY which, you know, was a very, very tepid correction. I mean, we moved from the highs from October 1st to the lows at the end of December, we said 3.3%. So literally almost nothing, right? Um, so the question is, you know, for how much? And keep in mind that during this period, we got some very bad data. And that bad data in DXY terms was worth a depreciation of like less than three and a half percent. So, you know, as I said before, the dollar is really pinned. It's refusing to move in one direction or another or another in a big way. So, you know, it still maintains somewhat of an uptrend, but it's a very slow one. Uh, I do expect this to fail and fail very badly, but nobody says that can happen in six months from now. Until then, we can be at 100. We can be at 101, at 102. Now, the question is, do you really want to ride this for months and months to see an appreciation of 3, 4, or 5%? You know, not universally, meaning I don't want to be long the dollar across the board. I don't want to be short the dollar across the board yet. Okay, so you will, this is a market having to do with the dollar that you still need to pinpoint the right opportunities. So at, at a given point, the dollar is going to be a nice sell against X, but might be a decent buy against Y, you know what I mean? So we have to take each market uh, on its own 
And as long as this is the effects trading environment, keep targets, you know, conservative. I mean, this is not yet a market that you can say, I'm looking to make 10% uh, in that or 5% in oh, that. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay, coach. <laughs> so, uh, coach, commodity digestion. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not why I uh, burped. <laughs> well, I assume so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of my favorite guests is with us, uh, Secret Agent Woman Nargis 007. Okay. So, so enjoy the, um, the interview. And what was the we'll car back that back. Sean Connery drove around that was all tricked out? Was that a Bentley? What was it? Aston Martin. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, James yeah. Bond always has an Aston Martin. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I would try, I <laughs> would trade in my Gremlin for one of those <laughs> or, my, or my Pinto. And, uh, I have a Genesis Coupe, which is the beginning of a new life in my Genesis, new beginnings. <laughs> and, and Forex Analytics said, let there be light. L-I-T-E, which is our uh, version for... It is the cheap way for you to be part Deep of our skates. community. It's our version. <laughs> yeah, but... Man, can you know, I say it? Hugely, hugely right. a value proposition. <laughs> because for $19, you get, you know, basic technical huh? analysis, candlesticks, macro. Uh, yeah. You get notifications on your phone. You can't even um, get take your girlfriend to McDonald's for that nowadays. <laughs> Unfortunately, that tends to be true, yes. All right. So, you know, I mean, you know. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Steve. I want to see what much. Nargis has on her radar. Yeah, me too. Okay. So, uh, thanks, man. Good review. And uh, thank you, face attendees. Stick around for Nargis. Nargis, welcome back. And I'm going to set you up now. Oh, I thought I promoted you to. There we go. Promote to panelists. And then uh, who's the participant? Oh, here. Just yeah, I'm new here. Yeah, She's already no, promoted. I, I have it, yeah. Hi, Nargis. Hi, uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, can yes, hear yes. you. Can hear you oh, well. Okay. Hi. Uh, Hi, how, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, I'm good. Uh, nice talking to you again, uh, Dale. Well, to and, date. Uh, thanks again for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. I didn't bring you flowers, but I'll let you share your screen. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the green box. It says well, share. It's a drop down. Yeah, screen. I did share. Uh, I did. Oh, I did. Uh, you have to select the screen. Uh, desktop. You'll get the second screen once you click yeah. that. Yeah. To select which screen or which uh, window you want to share. Yes. And okay. after clicking a second time, then we should have your screen. Uh, for some reason, it's uh, okay. Uh, okay. Why is it going? It's. Uh, did it share? No, nope. not yet. You click the green box. It says no, I did that. I did that. Oh, oh there you go. There you okay. go. Here it comes. You see your desktop now. So what, what, what screen are you seeing, Dale? Do your you desktop. Uh, your desktop, yeah. the one that says um, system, open system preferences. Oh, okay. That one. Okay. So you may have to stop sharing or oh. bring something else up on this screen. Oh, one second. Let me then just bring this here. This is a Mac. You can you can use a virtual desktop as well if you want. Yeah. Now you can you see my Twitter feed. Yes. Okay, we've got it. Oh, okay, good. And uh, here's a message for you to give you confidence. So proud of you, Nargis. Keep it going, from okay. Rohan Naji. Very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, how are you handling all this volatility, uh, the push to pull between Corona and central banks? Uh, um, what, what are you seeing here? And 
you know it's surprising uh, and every time it makes me a bigger believer that uh, you know that news is mostly an after effect i mean coronavirus is a sad thing definitely it will affect people uh, you know in a bad way uh, but i'm just talking in terms of some news perspective i mean we had earlier china yeah, deal, trade right yeah. and yeah. then we had the iran thing and now this is coming and they are they uh, i mean coincidentally or there's a reason behind it they all come at a certain point where markets are saying something So yes. Me personally was looking from that perspective. You want to show us your S&P chart? We're looking at your Twitter feed. Yeah. Yes. So uh uh so this is was something I had put out oh, okay. uh, earlier um you know start uh, you know in 2018 I put this whole thread was from 2018. I think first time we had talked about this also that uh, you know uh uh in terms of my wave analysis um not the elliot wave but the regular you know the movement to 55 which completes you know uh, the uh, price movement uh, i uh, i had already seen four and i was expecting a you know an, a price move to the upside uh, earlier the targets were coming into 3300s but we blew that off by by a big margin And, your uh, top, your top target. I I would need magnifiers, but I'm guessing it's a thirty, three forty four at one point six one eight. Am I seeing yes. it correctly? Yes. So um, yes. So if we see um. Yeah. So uh, I had, uh, I mean, uh, here the four to five extension is coming. I mean, XPX extension is coming in is much better. Um, that and um, uh, ES also a similar number. So, and um, I had certain notes. Um, Were you trading in two thousand during the dot com bubble? No, 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 no. Two thousand. Okay. I was too. I wasn't born then, actually. You were where? I wasn't born then at that time, <laughs> in terms of the trading community. <laughs> okay, you were I mean, in what bond? What's bond? No, I wasn't born as in born. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So um, this must look kind of strange to you, seeing uh, parabolic moves like in uh, many Nasdaq stocks. I mean, I've seen it before. Uh, yes, well, and, you know it happens in other instruments. I mean, Bitcoin was like that, right? Yeah, Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin was like that at twenty thousand. It was. Yeah. Uh, it has had blown so, off all uh, extensions, and RSI was at ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah. And I was like, let me see if it can touch hundred or at least ninety nine. But then it uh, just boom down. Yeah. So, so uh, what I mean, do you do with a market in a parabolic advance? You just jump on it. Uh, mostly yes i do uh, sometimes you go wrong shorting those very very high momentum uh, in terms of timing not in terms of the move itself like you know sometimes you trade short term <clears throat> so that can yeah. get you uh, and it has got me as well some, um, sometimes but uh, when i was looking at uh, the gan levels also and i was counting cycles Mm, uh, to me, this thirty-three, thirty-six uh, to thirty-three sixty-five was an important area because uh, SPX or ES would have completed uh, some ten cycles from the low of twenty-three forty-six, December eighteenth low. So this uh, S N P was doing five, ten, fifteen cycles. So that's why uh, I was personally looking for a reaction at this point, and we definitely got it. now the question is uh, will this still pose as a resistance uh, and uh, we get a bigger correction uh, uh, to uh, you know 55 ema on the daily or bill i mean we almost hit 55 ema uh, barring some 5 uh, 6 points so i would consider that as complete but would it go below now uh, 55 ema on the daily or uh, you know at least go below uh, 10 sma on weekly so that's what i'm looking for or do we Go, you know, go past these ten cycles and go on to the fifteenth cycle, which will very well take us into more than thirty-five hundreds. Okay, so uh, can you uh, explain to us what you mean by a ten cycle and a fifteen cycle? Oh, so uh, when I, I'm, you know, studying GAN, um, uh, 
what he proposes is that you know stocks or equities or indices move in cycles right so okay. they will come do cycles in 3 6 12 uh 12 18 24 those kinds uh, and uh, or 5 10 15 cycles you know so price from price from um, if it is starting from zero say it will go to five cycles which will be say 100 So one would be like you know twenty five, fifty, seventy five, hundred, hundred twenty five, like that. Okay, so you multiply yeah. it. Yeah, it's like a multiplier, the cycle. It's multiplier, uh, maybe some. Uh, you know, it's basically based on that GAN wheel. Okay, so and you, and and that was uh, GAN talking about price, not talking about time. No. So no. so if you you know if you study GAN, is there anything you can extrapolate as far as how much time this particular move uh, not exactly projecting or forecasting price just time is it early is it late mid cycle what do you think uh truly, and if yeah truly speaking um, i'm still uh, you know uh, venturing into time and what i have noticed is uh, and this has uh, you know me this has also given me some food for thought that maybe there is much more to time than what i'm seeing is that whenever we see a cycle for turn for a pullback the market rushes up like crazy so <laughs> it's like they're firing up something a higher cycle or god knows what so uh, so far uh, the timing for a pullback is not working so great or or the depth of the pullback is not working so great with respect we may get a pullback but it would be so minuscule that it won't look like a pullback okay so i'm still struggling with uh, uh, with the time maybe this particular time 2019 20 is a little bit i don't know different or maybe you guys have already say, seen this kind of moments so yeah so it still surprises me uh why would you know uh the timing uh, when the timing for a pullback comes the market rushes up another 50 60 100 points <laughs> just like that okay because uh i i would say that <clears throat> uh if you mark the beginning of this bull market after the financial crisis uh yeah. the lows were march 09 so we're looking at uh you know close to 11 years coming up in a month or two yes uh and any history that you know of uh i think it's one of the longest runs without a you know bear market uh you know bear market being 30% although we almost had that last december yeah, so um uh anything in gan that talks about uh longevity of bull markets or bear markets in terms of time or anything you've studied that um you know uh 11 years is that extraordinary for a bull market uh you don't know i i don't know either i i wouldn't say anything which i'm not ready to or, or yeah. i may not have much more uh, in all right well you know you're just going to keep it simple you uh yeah. so say you're long right now narcus yeah. okay and we're we're pressing right here 3327 um where you're wrong from here what would get you out of the way your 50 day moving average uh yes definitely the 50 day moving average uh if i was no first i would uh, my exit would be close below 10 sma definitely be where uh, 10 sma uh, on the daily okay yes. where's that come in that is currently now 32 78 here 3280 32 okay up, up all right down. yeah that's good so, to know yeah uh, that would say okay the cycle is turning bearish or if it is uh, you know th- just th- set up another break to buy yeah uh, and 336 is still posing an issue until 3365 uh, it is still posing an issue uh, you know just a caution for me because i'm following those levels that uh, because that's a, um, a gan level 3365 and i would be cautious around 3366 to 3365 uh, for it to turn back um and i was also looking at other indices um you know uh, nasdaq ym rty rty is i mean uh, russell is the one which is lagging the most 
YM and NQ are also at uh, points where they have, uh, you know, completed major, uh, major run, I would say. And uh, NASDAQ um, is, I don't know, for some reason, I have a feeling that it will go to 10,000. <laughs> the way it is running and 10,000 is also uh, 25 cycles because it is now more than 20 cycles. So I haven't seen at least NASDAQ stop at any in-between cycles. Yes, it's definitely generally, been leaning, uh, leading yeah. the whole pack recently. I mean, uh, yesterday's close, I was pointing out it ended up at least, well, maybe longer term it means something, but I can't remember the last time the NASDAQ 100 made new all-time highs and S&Ps were 30 handles under the previous high, which it took care of today. Yeah. But have, 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 you ever, have you, in your experience since you've been trading, seen that much of a lag in the S&P 500 compared to NASDAQ? Um, I I have always seen NASDAQ leading much more. I am not sure if okay. this is because of the, you know, the, the bigger tech companies are part of that, you know, the Amazons, Googles, Apple. Apple had a fantastic run. So maybe that has yeah. a push more in NASDAQ versus the S&P, the, the weight, because of the weightage of all these running crazy. Okay, well, give me the time the day and the price for the top and tesla tesla i think give the, me the day the time and <laughs> the it, price it, it's i'm not asking for much tesla tesla i think it has already happened yesterday 961 yesterday okay see you're on tape now so if it breaks <laughs> wow you can really promote sorry, it this was day. The, the high was 961 not 861 it was 961 correct yeah so uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, 18 cycles, uh, I mean, looking at the crazy run, uh, 961 um, should top it at least in the short term. Uh, but now or later on, if it is trading above 961 uh, or 1025, then we have a much, much higher uh, to go Tesla. We are looking into 1500s uh, because then after that, it will go to 24 cycles. Uh, but right for now, 961, I think, should be a good measure to at least relax it and return to some mean. Okay. I wouldn't be long Tesla right now, personally. Uh, okay, well, this is my opinion. Don't go, <laughs> you know, uh, people uh, <laughs> going and closing their profits. Yeah, why? If you could buy it if you have a parachute. Oh, yeah. But, but you know, the good thing is uh, last year when I was looking at Tesla, I had a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, said that uh, that uh, this um, this would go to five hundred. Yeah. So you know. Mm, Were you buying it there? Yeah, I did. I did trade it. I did trade it, but I didn't held it for long term. Yeah, that's uh, always that, the hard part. Yeah. So because it's too volatile to sleep properly at night, you know. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I go, I trade in, book some profits, uh, you know, at, at my levels. And, right. and I'm happy with that, right? So You know what? That, that's a great attitude. Because you don't know how many people, myself included, that when you make tough money on a trade, yeah. and then all of a sudden it turns into a windfall, that yeah. you tend to want to visit would have, could have, should have land. So, I mean, great. It's very important because you know what? That's going to give you longevity because mm -hmm. uh, you just consider it, uh, it's done, it's history next. Some people have that natural, um, inherent personality for that. Others, like myself, we have to change our paradigm. And next is a great word. You use it. It sounds like it, you don't even have to say it. You just do it. Uh, no, Dale. I mean, believe me, talking is so easy, but every day I still struggle with, uh, you know, disciplining yeah. myself. Yeah. Because when you are in the thick of things, that greed, that human nature takes over and I say, oh, you know, just let me look at this. Let me let it go. Let's see. Let's see. And some of the times I turn my good profits into a loss and then I'm wondering what the hell happened. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really is a tough way to make an easy buck, isn't it? Well, I what would... 
what would you say, Nargis, is your when you're you're like that and you're in the midst of a battle and you know emotions so you know we we talk like we're detached and everything what's your best tool for keeping things in perspective when you're in the heat of battle you yeah. know for some people it's their spirituality for some people they have a rules based system what helps you so uh, yeah so i go and reevaluate my emotional status okay what did i do then i give a pep talk no first first whole night i'll just you know be so bad at myself you know criticizing myself yeah because i i, I, I like how the hell can i make that mistake knowing yeah. thinking knowing that i was sitting there i mean like what took over me like you know yeah. the devil took over me kind of all the all the all the stuff i talk I, you know batter myself to that level and then i say okay you know what enough i need to get better at it i'll do this i'll write it and put a big note in capital letters in on my screen nargis do not do this you okay know, all right so <laughs> uh, writing things down yeah. is uh you know helps you because it's kind of like nlp neuro linguistic programming uh, you know uh i used to update my charts by hand and had a better feel for technical uh action than just having it pop up on a computer but uh, okay, so writing things down, and I, you know, I just wanted to, I really appreciate you being candid about it, uh, you know, that uh, we're all our own worst critics, and just like you have to be patient with the market, and this is self-talk too, we have to be patient with ourselves and uh, be gentler with ourselves and try and reduce the time frame of self-criticism, uh, you know, self-flagellation, whatever you want to call it. It's a waste of your energy and it's important for your, your health if you want longevity in this business to be able to just move on. So, yeah. I, you know, that was better than any chart you could show because I think we all have these emotional struggles every day and uh, very few people talk about it because they want to, you know, uh, they have a persona to protect. So, no, I mean, this this field is, the, it'll take everything from you. Some days you'll feel like you've aged 50 years, right, right there. Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I sometimes look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I'm getting, you know, eye bags and all that stuff. <laughs> 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 and I'm not even at an age to have that. Uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, every job has their own stresses, right? Uh, plus yeah. days, minus days, happy days. Yes. Uh, so, and yeah. Well, you know what? You have proved to me again, you know, your your technical work is very good. Rely on it, Nargis, and rely. Um, you are a warrior because, you know, if it was easy, everyone would be able to do it. And... Um, I know what people have to go through to um, first learn how to survive and then have births of thriving. And uh, I really appreciate you being candid and open about uh, not only great calls, but inner struggles in the trading business. You are you. a champion. Thank you. I just wanted to point one more thing. What yeah. I was seeing in go Apple ahead. was... Uh, okay. you know, just my uh, going by my uh, theory of 55 EMA. This red line is the 55 EMA on the monthly chart of Apple. Yeah. And uh, what I see is it has completed uh, the psych The circle is once, twice, thrice, four times. Uh, and this is, you know, the uh, start of the, you know, Apple pricing, charting, whatever yeah. data available on a chart. So this is the only place where we can actually see some movement um, very, very early days. So since, and since, and this is a monthly chart. And since then it has never mm -hmm. ever traded below 55 EMA. And this surge, this big surge is the fifth round. It's happening. So for me, 325 area was where it completed from the low of this 142 yeah. uh, in December, uh, 2018. Yeah. This is completing a major uh, number at 325. So 325, 28, 334. Let's say we, we'll just even go to 350 because an extension comes there. Okay. Uh, if at all that is a resistance area and if something 
happens to the markets and you know everything comes at a confluence and that is it then in my opinion this should trade below 55 ema sometime okay. in future so again that's my opinion okay so uh, apple either has completed or one more burst towards uh yeah, 350 and this, yes. and completing something up here. Something up here, yeah. All right, interesting, yeah. and uh, appreciate you. Uh, yeah, um, well, I I actually like that trade. So you know, I appreciate you showing Apple, and being here today, Nargis, and um, continued success in 2020. I hope pips rain down on you and your family. Thank you so much, Dale, and happy Valentine's Day in advance. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and to all of your team and to everyone. It's the best date I ha had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the cheapest date I've ever had. Oh, no, no, no. Please, your blessings, your good work, your all right. so much more, you know. All so, right, everyone. So you could follow Nargis at Nargis007. As you can tell, she works hard at her craft. There you go. There's her Twitter feed and... She doesn't have really have an ax to grind. She's just out there sharing her work, trying to be part of the trading community and serving others. So uh, Nargis, uh, thanks again for being with us today. Thank you, have a nice day, Dale. Okay, thank you, my trading warrior sister. And that's a wrap for us today, everyone. Uh, good hunting the rest of the day and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings and be kind to yourself. I'm talking to me. You're very welcome. <laughs>